The civil rights movement is best told by those who lived it. A first of its kind museum in Orangeburg will soon be getting a much bigger space to tell the story. Lisa Wiseman spoke to the man who documented this pivotal time through pictures. Tucked along a quiet residential street in Orangeburg, a place documenting the plight of black Americans in the 1950s and 60s. This is the Cecil Williams South Carolina Civil Rights Museum. This was the little boy again uh, where I did a, a drawing for my photograph. Inside are 25 galleries filled with a thousand artifacts. If you're lucky, you can get a private tour by the man whose name is on the building. This is Waits Waring and his wife, who, by the way, were ostracized by the Charleston community. Born in Orangeburg, grew up here, education here. And now you're running this museum here. Now running a museum, a big step uh, trying to bring back South Carolina's history. Five years ago, discouraged by the idea that South Carolina was the only Southern state without a museum focused on the battle for civil rights, Cecil Williams, then in his early 80s, along with his wife and sister, decided to start one. We wanted to have a museum that shows to people uh, the shoulders on whom we stand on, people who uh, sacrifice to make um, this state and America a great place for all people. They did in his old home. Do you remember what this room was when you lived here? Yes, uh, this room was my bedroom, one of the bedrooms in the home. Yeah, the bathroom on the right, and of course uh, a window over to the left side. They had the space and plenty to fill it. It's a record that pulled from his own lived experiences as a black man, like this picture outside of a service station drinking from a whites-only water fountain. My mother found out about this, of course. Um, she was not very happy because this was sort of dangerous to do during those days and through the camera lens as a lifelong photographer. About 95% of everything you see comes from William's personal collection. People whose uh, histories maybe might not be widely known, but nevertheless they were heroes and persons that I grew up knowing and photographing. Videos play and a guest book collects signatures from visitors, some as far away as California. William says there's been about 30,000 visitors in all. So this is the gift shop. This is the gift shop. For sale, shirts marking the first case against segregation in public schools. This, of course, um, talks about Brown versus Board of Vacation, but also Briggs versus Elliott. It's a landmark case that happened here in our state, in Clarendon County, years before Martin Luther King stood up for equality and Rosa Parks sat down for hers. Most people don't know that they did not start the American Civil Rights Movement. South Carolina, in my opinion, is where the civil rights movement began. Williams has hope that more people will come to understand that. Ground is expected to be broken in a few weeks on a space that can display three times as much history. We felt and still feel now that the uh, museum should have been supported by the state of South Carolina, but that did not happen. So we stepped up to the plate and the city and the county of Orangeburg stepped up to the plate so that it will be, will be a reality. So just a few miles away, this is the area where the museum is expected to be built. It's going to be part of a bigger revitalization of this area known as Railroad Corner. In Orangeburg, Lisa Wiseman, ABC News 4. That new museum is expected to take about a year to build. Cecil Williams will be 87 when it opens.